two techniques can be used to skin a marten. The first one to be shown is the method that begins with the front legs. The second technique, which begins with the hind legs, will be shown later. First of all, however, there are a few tips that can greatly improve the quality of the preparation of marten furs. When the marten is frozen, it's important to leave it in a warm place to thaw out before skinning it. Care must also be taken to dry and comb the fur before skinning. To obtain a better grading, spruce and fur gum should be removed from the fur with naphtha or wood alcohol. This process should be done very carefully. First, a cut is made under the paw as far as the joint. The end of the leg is also cut so as to leave the pads and claws on the carcass. Then, sliding a thumb between the skin and the flesh, skin the leg to the body. The same method is used for both legs. Then, a knife is used to cut around the upper and lower lips. When cutting around the eye openings, avoid leaving overly large holes in the pelt. The skinning of the head is completed by cutting the ears free at the skull. The rest of the skinning can be done with your hands. Once the front legs have been freed, Simply pulling on the leather makes it come off the carcass quite easily. A knife is used to make an incision in the hind legs along the line separating the belly fur from the back fur. Skinning can then be continued with your hands. Take particular care not to tear the pelt when freeing the hind legs. Pads and claws are left on the carcass. On males, a cut is made at the opening of the penis. Then the skin around the anus is cut. All that's left to do now is to free the tail. 
simply by inserting your fingers under the skin at the base of the tail and pulling on the carcass. This skinning technique has the advantage of leaving practically no fat on the pelt and it also keeps fleshing to a minimum. The second Martin skinning technique is quite the opposite of what we've just seen. This time the trapper starts at the hind legs and not at the head. Actually, this procedure is the same one used for skinning minks. An incision is made under each hind leg as far as the anus, following the natural separation line between the long back hairs and the short belly fur. The pelt is then cut around the anus. The legs are then skinned down to the pads with a knife. Use your fingers to free the front legs. Once the hind legs are free, all you have to do is insert a thumb at the base of the tail and pull on the carcass to remove it. Skinning continues to the front legs. Just pull the pelt and it will come off easily. Then the skin is removed as far as the ear cartilages, which are cut off at the skull. All that remains to be done is to cut around the eye openings, the nose and the lips. Now we've come to the boarding of the pelt. The procedure is the same no matter which skinny technique was used. First, make sure both front legs are pulled out so that they can dry better. The hind legs are spread open and attached to the front of the board with push pins. The next step is to split the tail open lengthwise with a sharp knife. The drawing board used for Martins is similar to the one used for minks. It's very important not to stretch the pelt on the board as this decreases the density of the fur, which in turn decreases its market value. Choosing the correct size forming board is thus very important. The tail is carefully spread and attached to the board with push pins. To finish, remember to insert the belly wedge under the pelt, otherwise it will be hard to get the pelt off the board as it shrinks while drying. The pelt is then left to dry head down in a cool, well-ventilated room. Approximately 10 hours after the preparation, the pelt is removed and put back on the board, fur side out. To do this, push the nose inside the mouth opening with your thumbs and continue pushing the leather inside until the pelt has been completely turned fur out. If the skin is too dry, it should be moistened with a damp cloth. Then, pressing lightly with your fingers on the nose and tail base, pull the pelt gently to work it back into its original shape. Finally, the pelt is put back on the drying board to complete the drying process.
The fisher pelt should be brushed and dried well before skinning begins. To avoid contracting infections or diseases during the preparation, wearing surgical gloves is strongly recommended. Fisher skinning begins the same way as marten and mink skinning does. An incision is made on the inside of the hind legs from one hind paw to the other, along the line separating the belly fur from the back fur. During the skinning process, porcupine quills are sometimes found between the fisher's skin and its flesh. Be careful that the knife doesn't slip on these quills and go through the pelt. Use your hands to complete the skinning of the legs. It's better to leave the claws on the carcass, as they could damage the pelt during drumming at the auction house. Free the tailbone by pushing with your fingers and remove it with a tail stripper. After the tail has been deboned, it is split lengthwise with a sharp knife and a tail splitting guide. The fissure is then placed on a fleshing gambrel, which has two strong hooks and enables trappers to work with greater ease. The trapper continues, pulling the pelt down gently but firmly and using a knife to detach the flesh from the skin. It's important to do this step carefully. The front legs are then opened by cutting from the pad to the elbow joint. A cut is made on the tip of the foot so that the pads and claws are left on the carcass. Using your fingers, free the legs through the hole made by the knife. Free the neck and head in the usual way, being careful not to cut any throat veins. The same precaution applies to all other species. White cartilages indicate where the ears should be cut. The animal's eyelids will likewise show where to cut around the eyes. The fisher pelt is then placed on the fleshing beam for scraping. The leather is sprinkled with sawdust to prevent any fat from getting on the fur or under the scraper. 
With fissures, the saddle, a reddish membrane attached to the middle of the back, is removed. When the pelt has been scraped clean, it's put onto a drawing board chosen according to the size of the pelt. The hind legs are opened and pushed pinned to the belly side. Two types of boards may be used. The solid board used here requires the insertion of a belly wedge. The split board is made up of two parts which are opened during drying and closed to remove the pelt when it is dry. Then, the lower lip is pinned to the board, at which time the trapper scrapes off any remaining flesh. The forelegs may be tied or left free. What's important is that the leather dries well. Here, the trapper is attaching the legs, which are still spread open, to a foot paddle. Using your thumbs, spread the tail and attach it to a galvanized screen, which is in turn attached to the drying board by push pins or staples. Nowadays, fisher pelts are offered for sale fur out because coloring is one of the main pricing factors. Therefore, after the pelt has been drying for a few hours, it is turned fur out and returned to the drying board, using the same technique that was used for the marten. During drying, it's important to check the leather frequently because it has a tendency to become very stiff. It's very difficult to turn the leather if it's too dry. When the pelt is turned fur out, it's better to leave the forelegs inside the pelt to protect them during shipping and drumming. The lower back is also attached with push pins. If a solid drawing board is used, don't forget to insert the belly wedge. Thank you.